All right, moments ago, we reported to you that the president will be meeting with the Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke this afternoon. We can add to that now. We know that the Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner, along with Gene Sperling, the economic advisor to the president, will also be in attendance. This is very key. You'll recall a couple of days ago, the president giving a public press conference, markets selling off 200 points. Then yesterday, we heard from the Federal Reserve downgrading its outlook on the U.S. and global economy, saying it's going to be difficult for job growth, keeping rates at historic lows till 2013. So hopefully, those minds getting on the same page here with an economic message and where to go from here. Chris? All right, Lori. Well, uncertain markets have investors going for gold. That is for sure. Prices reaching record highs. Joining us now from Stanford, Connecticut, is Peter Schiff, CEO and Chief Global Strategist of Euro Pacific Capital and author of How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes. Peter, all right, so we hit 1800 on gold today. Is this flood into gold warranted and will it continue? Well, look, you just described the meeting that's about to take place with Obama, Geithner, Bernanke. I mean, nothing's going to come out of that meeting but more inflation. So if you don't need gold now, you better hold it. You better have some gold when that meeting comes to a conclusion. So these calls for $2,500, uh, you th you, I'm, I'm guessing you might think that's conservative then since we sit at about 18 right now. Well, look, there is no ceiling to the price of gold because there's no floor to the dollar. What is our economic policy? Print money. I mean, gold, gold is not just a commodity, it's a monetary metal. And the reason people are buying real money is because they are losing faith, and rightly so, in fiat money, in paper money. It doesn't work. And you had Ben Bernanke come out yesterday and say he's going to keep interest rates at zero for at least another two years. How does he do that? He has to monetize a lot of government debt. He has to keep printing money. That destroys its value. And so the people who are smart are moving into gold. The problem is most people have haven't done it yet. Hardly anybody owns gold. That's mm -hmm. the problem. You know, Peter, we try to put labels on where we are as an economy. Are we in a depression? Are we in a recession? Are we in recovery mode? You seem to think that even though the, you know, the technicals might not point to it, we are in a depression or we're certainly on the cusp of getting into one. Well, I've been saying that for a while. And I think the only reason you don't notice it is because the government is underestimating inflation, and so they're overestimating growth. But I'm one of the few people who not only predicted QE3, and now Goldman Sachs is saying they predicted it too, but I predicted it when they started QE2, because I said QE2 wouldn't work. All it would do was plunge our economy deeper into debt. It might have jacked up the stock market for a while, but I said the minute they take the QE punch bowl away, we're right back in recession, and the Fed's going to launch QE3. And they're doing exactly what I said they were going to do. But it's not good for the economy. The more they stimulate, the worse the problem gets, because they stimulate the problem, and they inhibit the solution. Peter, how much do you think, you know, we talk about sentiment all the time. How much do you think, though, and I'm as guilty as anybody, because I'm, I, you know, I do it every day, and I talk to people every day about it. How much do you think the gloom and doom and the apocalyptic uh, scenarios that we paint every day cause people to hoard their cash and to not spend it and to not go out and buy the house or the car they've been waiting to spend because they watch us all day long. <laughs> Well, the problem is not people refusing to spend. I mean, Americans are already spending too much. The problem is we're not investing. And why aren't we investing? And I'm not talking about speculating in the stock market. I'm talking about investing in plant and equipment, in real capital that produces goods and provides employment opportunities. Mm. And people aren't doing that because there's no credit available, because nobody is saving. There's no money on Main Street. It's all on Wall Street and in the banks, but it's funny money. And the government is vilifying, and this is where Obama is a big part of the problem. We are vilifying and punishing the people that create the jobs. We're making people not want to create jobs. In fact, a lot of people, you listen to the president, you want to fire the people you've got. Because they, they, what they do is they put a target on you if you're an employer, and they start shooting at you. Because the minute you decide to hire somebody, you lose all your rights. And if you, and if, because all, it's the employees that get all these special privileges, but they come at the expense of the employer. And the only way the employer can get out of the government crosshairs mm. is not to hire people. Great stuff, Peter, as always. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, Peter Schiff from Euro Pacific Capital. Lori? Peter, not surprised, I'm sure, to see another sell-off in the stock market today. Investors digest yesterday's Fed statement. So what's the Fed's next move? to boost the economy or is the toolbox empty? We just learned the president will meet with the Fed chief this afternoon. Much more coming up this hour. Plus, the judge says our government is playing a trick on all of us. He calls it taxation by inflation. The judge is here. You can see he's walking onto the set right now and he's ready to expose the smoke and mirrors. Keep it here on Fox Business.